pneumatic, comparator. Have you ever wondered? How parts being manufactured are checked to see whether they meet the actual standard specifications. Today in this video we will see how this is done. This is done by using an instrument which is called as comparator. There are many types of comparators available. In this video we will learn about a pneumatic comparator. A comparator is a precision instrument used to compare the dimensions of given working component with actual working standard. If you interested to know the construction and working of all the comparators, the link is provided in the description. You can click on the link to watch all the types of comparators. This video will cover the followings. First we will discuss about the various parts of pneumatic comparator. Then we will see its working. The different type of dimension which can be compared with standard using this comparator. At the end we will see its advantages and disadvantage. If you are new to our channel, consider subscribing to get all the latest videos. And don't forget to give your opinion about this video in the comment section below. Let's start. Construction of the pneumatic comparator. It consists of a compressor. Compressor is the heart of a pneumatic comparator. Compressor compresses atmospheric air and stores it inside the storage tank. Filter. After the compressor, the filter is present. In this filter, all the dust particles present in the air are separated from the air and clean air passes through this filter. Tank. After the air passes through the filter, the air pipe divides into two paths. Some air goes into the tank and some air goes to the gauging head through the orifice. Orifice. This orifice leads air to the second chamber. Manometer. Second chamber is an outlet to a glass manometer tube. Gauging head. The second chamber is also connected by a flexible tube to a gauging head. This gauging head has two restricting jets that are used to check unevenness or irregularities in the workpiece. Working of pneumatic comparator. In this comparator, compressed air is used as an operating medium. At first, the air is compressed in the air compressor. Then the compressed air from the compressor passes through the air filter. All the dust particles present in the air are separated from the air in the air filter, and only pure air passes through the filter. After passing from the filter, the air pipe is divided into two ways, some air goes to the tank, and some goes to the restricted jet or orifice. As air enters the water tank, bubbles will be created in the tank, and the rest of the air which passes through the orifice reaches the gauging head through a flexible tube. A controlled amount of air passed through the orifice with the required pressure in it. At this time the manometer shows the initial pressure by which the air passes to the gauging head. The workpiece or the job is reciprocated along the gauging head. This gauge head is generally used to examine the internal diameter of a cylinder, whether it has irregularities or not, in its internal diameter. This gauge head is inserted into the cylinder, and both jets in the gauge head faces towards the internal wall of the cylinder. The internal wall of the cylinder restricts the air coming out of the jet of the gauging head. Based on the gap between the jet and internal wall of the cylinder, back pressure will be created as the internal wall restricts the air coming from the jet. When the back pressure is created, the air which is passing through the gauging head will return back and it will go inside the manometer tube and this backflow of air will push down the water inside the manometer. At first, a standard workpiece is taken in which the internal wall is perfectly flat. This standard workpiece is used to calibrate the pneumatic comparator. Using this standard workpiece the water height as the manometer is adjusted so that it is equal to the height of water in the tank. This standard workpiece is known as a reference workpiece because it is used to get the reference pressure in the manometer. When the gauge head of the pneumatic comparator is placed inside a cylinder which is to be examined, the air hits the internal wall of the cylinder, and if there are any irregularities in the internal wall the back pressure in the comparator is created, and the water inside the manometer is pushed down. Hence, the water level inside the manometer falls, and we get a height difference between the water level of tank and water level of the manometer. This height difference is denoted by delta H. So if the delta H value is high then we can say, that more amount of roughness is there at the position of the cylinder where the gauge head is placed. After the gauge head is placed in different positions inside the cylinder, and delta H is noted for different points so that roughness throughout the cylinder can be measured. If delta H is high for different points inside the workpiece then this workpiece needs to be rejected. Pneumatic comparator is used when a large number of cylinders or workpiece needs to be tested. 
That is, when there is the mass production of the work piece and quality inspection needs to be done. Applications of pneumatic comparator. Cylindricity. The example used in this video is of checking cylindricity. Ovality to check ovality, we need to rotate the gauging head inside the part. This will give all the variation on the circumference of the part. Similarly this comparator can be used to check other dimensions like straightness, external diameter, etc. Advantages. It is cheaper, simple to operate, and the cost is low. It is free from mechanical hysteresis and wear. The magnification can be obtained as high as 10,000 times. The gauging member is not in direct contact with the work. Tapers and ovality can be easily detected. The method is self-cleaning due to continuous flow of air through the jets, and this makes the method ideal to be used on shop floor for online controls. Disadvantages. They are very sensitive to temperature and humidity changes. The accuracy may be influenced by the surface roughness of the component being checked. Different gauging heads are needed for different jobs. Auxiliary equipment such as air filters, pressure gauges and regulators are needed. Non-uniformity of scale is a peculiar aspect of air gauging, as the variation of back pressure is linear over only a small range of the orifice size variation. If you are new to ADTW, consider subscribing this channel to get all the latest videos. If you find this video helpful click on the like button and comment your doubts or opinions in the comment section.